And now for something completely different. Welcome, everyone, to another Literalist Reaction video. I'm Dave. With me, as always, my good friend, John Doe. Oh, John, you, you have wonderfully coiffed hair as of now. Why, thank you, Dave. Um, actually, it is sort of out of hand, and uh, pretty soon it will be coming under some form of control. I haven't decided <laughs> exactly what yet, uh, whether I'm going to go with the buzz cut, whether I'm going to continue to grow this length out so that I can do the... Uh, the you know the, the Favio because that's where you're headed is the Favio. The Favio, no. This will be a ponytail and this will be trimmed to the skull, so it's kind of a Viking. Viking. You go in the Viking. Viking. <laughs> yeah, I for. feel like the Viking sans beard is just a terrible, a terrible thing. I, you know, just grow grow a beard. I'm pro, I don't know if you know this about I just me. Shave the beard. <laughs> Somebody comes as a shock. I'm pro beard. <laughs> Really, I'm anti-shaving. I'm not even pro-beard. I'm anti-shaving. I, I thought you were holding a puppy. That's your beard. Okay. <laughs> no, my puppy is snoring. All right. What, <laughs> what do we got today? I, I think we got to do some Rush. It's been a while. It's been I, a hot minute. So I mean, some rush. you're never going to hear me complain about Rush. That's for sure. Now, look, again, this is a song. I've had this album since it came out. In fact, this is the one song on the album that doesn't have its own Wikipedia page. Really? I, yeah. I wonder what's different about this one. I didn't even look at the length. Is it shorter? No, it's about four minutes. I think. Okay. Huh. So uh, it's called Different Strings, and I hope you enjoy it. And you can tell me what it's about, because I don't know. <laughs> well, well, I know what I'm not going to do. Look it up on Wikipedia after this video. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> oh, chill intro. Come to slay the dragon Come to watch him fall Making arrows out of pointed words Giant killers at the call Too much fuss and bother Too much contradiction and confusion Peel away the mystery a lot of strict piano from Rush. Yeah. Long with our naivety 
It just ends? <laughs> Boy, that's... I didn't see the ending coming. I figured you didn't. And listening to it, it sounds like that should have been the start of a seven-minute jam. Well, it should have been the start of at least a three-minute jam followed by the second <laughs> act of the song. <laughs> I feel like that's, no, that's what I've become accustomed to. I've grown accustomed to a certain standard of rush. <laughs> and that's... I know, man. Hmm. Huh. So, l- lyrically, what's your takeaway? It, it maybe is plain and obvious, but I, I, you sometimes find I, these unique. Well, I don't know, because I, uh, I felt like I had a pretty firm grasp on what this song was about, about halfway through it. And then there was a line that completely changed my mind about what I, what I supposed. So uh, when the song began, I thought that it was a song about coming of age, growing up, you're a child. So... I had a lot of imagery of like playing make believe. I need a giant slayer and I, you know, we're going to go slay dragons and, and just like make believe is stuff. You run around and you pick up sticks and you play nights in the forest with your friends. Uh, so that is very much what I thought this song was going to be about until about the halfway point. And then suddenly I feel like it took the turn where it started talking about you and I. So now we've, we've separated. We are talking about a, a couple uh, what I would view as a couple. Um, and I think that, Given how the second half of the song went, I think this song is about the imagery of a young couple who gets together and then they grow up together and they realize that as time has gone on, like they have become different people. But I think this is not any sort of a sad song or a breakup song or anything. I think that this song is about two people realizing sometimes we have different chords, sometimes our strings are strung differently, but we do such a good job of finding solid ground and still being played together. I think this song is actually very hopeful. I I think it's really about a couple that has learned to play in their differences uh, and still make beautiful music. Uh, That's what I would take from it because I just really paid attention to the lyrics that time. (laughs) Was it for the Uh, first time? (laughs) Because as you know, uh, from the Wikipedia page, the only thing I can tell you about that song is that it is positioned on the second side of the album between Entre Nous and Natural Science. (laughs) Entre Nous! (laughs) Entre Nous. Musically, I also didn't see that coming. I, I don't hear a lot of ballads from Rush. Now, mind you, I still have a ton of Rush I have not heard, but I didn't really expect a ballad without a driving drum solo or something at some point you know like it stayed a ballad it stayed real chill and you had some of your chimes in there and you had a regular piano instead of a keyboard i mean and i I was probably still a keyboard being played but the sound was a piano um it was nice it was chill it was relaxed and then the guitar solo started to lull you into this really like almost zen zone of just pure exactly. enjoyment and then it just ends <laughs> it was, to me he was just getting revved up you know he was I, in first gear and they faded out i have a theory about that mind you wild supposition here um i wonder if that was on purpose like because it left you wanting more it left you ending this song going but but that's it <laughs> why, why is that it Okay, well, I would say it definitely had a purpose because uh, vinyl records could only hold so much information, so le- so much length of song, you know, in the day. This is before CDs, obviously, mm-hmm, 1980. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, the song after it is nine and a half minutes. The song <laughs> is four and a half minutes, you know. All right, so got there some length there. room left. They, they probably just decided, well, we could, we could fade number two out a little bit because... I don't want to change the other two songs at all. So that's probably what happened. And I think I recall hearing someone tell me at one point that Getty Lee did the, the lyrics for that particular song, which is rare. All 
all of Rush, you know, from the time of the fourth or so album was, you know, Neil Peart mm-hmm. writing. And in this particular case, uh, Getty stepped up and did the writing. <laughs> Well, all right. I uh, I gotta say, once again, it was still enjoyable. It was not what I expected, but anytime I get something I don't see coming, it generally makes me pretty happy. <laughs> yeah, yep. I have to look through and see if we have now completed the Permanent Waves album, which mm. is my favorite Rush album. It began with the Spirit of Radio, which mm-hmm, was mm-hmm. Free Will. A hundred percent dead. Jacob's Ladder, yes. Also loved. I believe we did Entre New. I have memory of that. And I believe we did Think Natural so. Science. So we definitely did Natural Science. The last song on Permanent Waves, and you have completed Permanent Waves. You are now free to buy the CD. <laughs> buy this? Who owns CDs? <laughs> Let's not age the old guy. <laughs> That's the end?